Now let's talk about the venous drainage, the coronary sinus, the venous drainage which is done by the great cardiac, small cardiac, middle cardiac vein, the one which are running on the surface and the groove of the heart, they ultimately are going to drain their blood into this, the venous sac called as coronary sinus and then coronary sinus will open in the posterior wall of right atrium. So a few things about the coronary sinus before we look into the diagram and look at the tributaries. So guys, this coronary sinus which is approximately 3 cm long and it is situated in posterior coronary sulcus. It is situated in the posterior coronary sulcus. Either you call it posterior coronary sulcus or you can say it's a posterior coronary sulcus or posterior atrioventricular groove. Same thing, posterior coronary sulcus or posterior atrioventricular groove. Developmentally, coronary sinus is the remnant. It's a remnant of the left horn of sinus venosus. Remnant of left horn of sinus venosus. And this coronary sinus, it opens in the smooth posterior wall in the smooth posterior wall of right atrium. So these are few uh, introductory points that we should know about coronary sinus. It's a venous sinus which is around 3 cm long present on the posterior side in the atrioventricular groove. I will show you the picture for that in a while. It's a remnant of left horn of the sinus venosus and it opens ultimately it is opening into the uh, posterior wall of right atrium, smooth posterior wall of right atrium. See, the point is, uh, in many textbooks of anatomy, to show the coronary sinus, what they do, they turn the heart like this. Because coronary sinus is situated posteriorly. So, they will turn the heart and then show the coronary sinus. The problem with turning the heart is that once you, once you, uh, once you completely change the orientation of the heart, then obviously the right goes toward the left side, left comes toward the right side. So, when you look at the tributaries of the coronary sinus, it will be difficult for us to compare them with the arteries. If I say great cardiac vein, and you try to compare the great cardiac vein with which artery it is running, it's not easy to identify those arteries when you see it from the posterior view. So it's, it's, it's advisable to first understand and learn the branches or the tributaries of coronary sinus from the anterior view and then later on you will be comfortable with both the views. So overall, what I want is that let's discuss the coronary sinus on the same diagram that we are discussing till now. So once again, this is the right border. the inferior border and the left border. So let's stick to the same diagram only. And where is coronary sinus? We said it is in the posterior coronary sulcus. So let's say this here is the site for posterior coronary sulcus. Let me highlight that this is the coronary sinus. I'm drawing it dotted because it is present on the posterior side. It is present on the posterior side. So this is the coronary sulcus sinus. Okay. Let me uh, draw a tributary of coronary sinus here and I want you to think about that which artery will be seen accompanying it here. Now starting with the largest tributary of the coronary sinus that is called as a great cardiac vein. Great cardiac vein will be running like this and then turning on the left border goes posteriorly and drains into the left end of the coronary sinus. This vein here is called as a great cardiac vein. This vein here is called as a great cardiac vein. That is called as a great cardiac vein. Now, great cardiac vein will be seen running with what artery? See, because now you're seeing it from the anterior aspect, it's very easy. Just think of what arteries were present in these groove here. The major artery that we just discussed present here was the left anterior descending. So, left anterior descending artery somewhere here. And obviously, the artery that is winding around the left border will be the circumflex artery. So, if the question says that what major arteries are running with the great cardiac vein or great cardiac vein runs with which major artery, then your answer will be it is the left anterior descending artery and also the circumflex artery. Left anterior descending and circumflex artery. Then we got a vein which is running along the lower border, inferior margin. Now we got an artery running along the inferior margin like this. The vein, sorry. 
it turns on the inferior border and then it drains into the right end of the coronary sinus. This is the small cardiac vein. This here is a small cardiac vein. The small cardiac vein should be accompanied by what? Now, what was the artery present here? It was a right marginal artery. So, one is a right marginal artery which will accompany it. And then on the posterior side, it is a main right coronary artery. If you remember, right coronary artery was coming down like this and then going backward. So, RC, the major trunk of RC, the main trunk of RC will be seen there. So, small cardiac vein is accompanied by one, it is by the RCA and then along the inferior border with along the right marginal artery. And then we have a vein which is draining into coronary sinus present like this. That is obviously it is present on the posterior side and between the two ventricles. So this is called as the middle cardiac vein. This one here is the middle cardiac vein. And needless to say middle cardiac vein will be accompanied by what artery? What is the main artery over there? That was a posterior interventricular artery. The PIV, the posterior interventricular artery is the one which accompanies it. When they ask the question on the tributaries of coronary sinus, that's how they uh, put this question clinically that a patient comes to the emergency department and the patient is seen, he was bleeding from the vein accompanied with so-and-so artery. So they will give you the name of the artery and then you have to find out which vein is it. Or they might give you the name of the vein and you have to find out what artery is that. So it's very important to understand artery and vein together. And it's easy, it's, it's easy to understand or remember it when you see it from the same aspect in which we discuss the arteries as well. Apart from these three tributaries, three major tributaries of coronary sinus, we have some minor also. Like there is one tributary to the coronary sinus like this, which is draining the blood from the posterior wall of left ventricle. So we simply call it posterior vein of left ventricle. This is posterior vein of left ventricle, posterior vein of left ventricle. And then we got another vein which is draining, coming from above and draining into coronary sinus like this on again on the posterior side this is called as the oblique this is called as the oblique vein of left atrium oblique vein of left atrium and this is also known as the vein of marshall this is also known as the vein of marshall oblique vein of left atrium or vein of marshall So guys, great cardiac vein, number one, small cardiac vein, two, middle cardiac vein. They are three major veins which are occupying the major grooves of the heart. Then we have some minor veins like posterior vein of left ventricle, oblique vein of left atrium or vein of Marshall. Whether they are major or they are minor veins, whether they are in the groove or not in the groove, but they are ultimately draining into coronary sinus. But there are certain veins which from the surface of the heart goes directly into the anterior wall of right atrium and are not tributaries of coronary sinus and we call them anterior cardiac vein. So we got some veins in there here like this and what you see these veins are directly opening on the anterior wall, not even posterior, on the anterior wall of the right atrium. All these veins are called as the anterior cardiac veins. These are the anterior cardiac veins. Not the Thevesian veins guys, Thevesian veins we saw that they were opening on the posterior wall. These are opening on the anterior wall. So please note that anterior cardiac veins are the one which are draining directly on the anterior wall of right atrium and they are not tributaries of coronary sinus. This question is also asked more than once that which of the following is not a tributary of coronary sinus. So clearly it's the anterior cardiac vein which is not the tributary, it directly opens on the anterior wall. If I show you the picture for the comparison here, let, let's look at this image guys. This is the one which is showing the artery and vein together. Well, obviously this here is the coronary sinus. Look at that. You can see on the posterior side, that's a coronary sinus. I'm not going to label it anything. I just wanted to just uh, the follow uh, the marker here. Look at this. That's, that's the vein here. That's a great cardiac vein. Look at the great cardiac vein. Then it turns like this on the left border and going back and draining into the coronary sinus. So obviously the, the great cardiac vein here is accompanied by LAD, left anterior descending. And when it turns backward, it is accompanied by the circumflex artery. On that side, if you see, 
we have a art vein coming from on this side that is what this is the marginal uh, what do you say the small cardiac vein turning backward and draining there so here it is accompanying by the right marginal artery and then you can see the right coronary artery is also going back so that is also accompanying the small cardiac vein and that this vein here the middle cardiac vein that you can see the middle cardiac vein that is accompanied by the, by the the inter the posterior interventricular artery right so these are some major tributaries i want to show and and look at these vein guys look at this vein present anteriorly here this vein which is present anteriorly they are directly opening on the anterior wall of the right atrium and not going posteriorly or draining into any of the tributary of coronary sinus these are the anterior cardiac vein look at these are the anterior cardiac vein which opens directly on the anterior wall so that's about the the blood supply so we talked about the arterial supply and the venous drainage and as i said in the venous drainage the most important thing is to remember that what major vein is accompanied by which artery